Welcome back to Crafters Grove. Today I'm going to be showing you how we turned a shower curtain into a curtain to replace the missing doors on this reclaimed armoire we purchased to stand in as a hall closet or a linen closet because in our older home we just don't have one of those. So funny enough, in this older home that doesn't have a hall closet or a linen closet, it does have renovated bathrooms, so we no longer need a shower curtain as all of our bathrooms have glass doors. However, this shower curtain is still in fairly good condition. It's just rather small and not great as a shower curtain, so I'm going to repurpose it into some curtains that we desperately need to hide all of our junk. So in measuring both the height and width of the space that I want the curtains to cover, I've discovered that I need a 43 by 39 inch length curtain. However, a curtain that's straight across isn't going to look as nice, so I'm seeing if we use the whole width of the curtain, how is that going to look? And I think it's going to turn out quite well, and that saves us from making an extra seam. So next, measure out your measurements and be sure to add an inch for every seam that you need to do. On this, I'm lucky that I only need to do the bottom seam, so I'm adding an inch to the overall length. And then I'm marking out the exact length of fabric that I need so that I can cut along this chalk line and hopefully get a straighter cut than I usually get. Once your material is cut to size, you want to sew a protective seam along all of the raw edges to help prevent fraying. Next, to prepare for the seams, you want to iron down the folds of the seams. Match the existing seams by aiming for the final fold to be the same width as the existing seam, which is just over a half an inch. So then the first fold needs to be anywhere under half an inch in order to fit under the second fold. To make sure the fold is consistent all the way through, I've created a little bit of a marker to help guide the width of the fold. So I did that by applying a bit of chalk onto a popsicle stick and then running that to indicate how much of a fold we need to do the whole way around and then ironing on top of that fold. By ironing, you not only secure that fold that you've made, it also allows for nice crisp lines so that you get a nice professional looking seam at the end. Once you've secured that first fold or that inner fold of the seam, you can start on the second one by repeating the same steps as before. Mark your marker on your popsicle stick or whatever you're using and then fold over to that width and then iron on top. This time, after you've ironed, let the fabric cool slightly and then pin what you've ironed. This is going to help secure the seam while you sew. And continue pinning and ironing and measuring until you reach the other end of your seam.
To create the look of a high quality finish on your project, try to match your current seams to the original seams and doing so by not only matching that width as we did in the last step, but also matching where the stitch is in relation to the edge of the seam. So as we prepare to sew that loop for the curtain rod to slide into, we've run into the tag. Now, if we don't cut it out now, we're going to lose it in the loop. And because I don't always remember what the washing instructions are, especially for something like curtains that you only wash once in a while, it's important to cut out that tag and then we'll sew it in later. So to create this loop, I just wanna fold over that top large seam that had the hook holes and create the loop there. But I wanna make sure that this curtain rod is going to fit in. So we're gonna open it up and try to fit in it. So thankfully the curtain rod does have instructions of installation on the back, but I'm also going to walk you through how to install the curtain rod later in this video. So if your curtain rod fits into this folded over seam, that's fantastic because it's going to make for a more perfect final project, but also it allows for you to have a line to follow for that fold. But if it doesn't just make that fold a slightly bigger than you intended, and nobody's gonna see the back of your project anyway, so it's really not a big deal, nothing to worry about. Okay, so just like you did with the other hem, you're gonna fold over the fabric, iron it, and pin it. The only difference with this hem is we don't need to do a double fold because it's already sewn in. We're just creating a casing to thread the curtain rod into. Okay, with your seam all pinned, you're ready to sew. And partway through that sewing, just add that tag in and sew over it to once again make it part of the curtain. So to make sure the curtain sits exactly where I wanted to, rather than fixing the curtain rod where I originally planned, I had Steven hold it up so that we could have the length sit perfectly and then affix the curtain rod wherever that length shall be. So if you're doing this in your armoire as well, you might also have this block that you see on the left side of the screen. It's inconvenient as it's going to impact the hanging of the curtain, but it was really convenient as it was exact height of where we wanted the curtain rod and the curtain rod rests on the block while Stephen was installing the brackets that hold the curtain rod. So as I mentioned before, there are instructions on the back of the curtain rod packaging. But one thing you want to keep in mind and ensure before you install those screws is to make sure that they're not too long, that they're going to pass through to the other side of the armoire or to the front of the armoire where you would see them. 
Otherwise, just set the height of your curtain rod, attach the bracket to the curtain rod, mark off the height, and then drill in the screws. And once you have both brackets in, you're essentially done. Now, if you don't have that center block above the opening, or it doesn't get in your way, you can stop there. But for us, it did get in the way, so we determined it had to be removed. So Stephen used a series of tools to try to remove it. It was glued in quite well, and what worked the best was the chisel and hammer, as you see here. Chiseling off the excess, and then once you chiseled all the pieces off, you can sand it down and give it away, and you're done. Now you can thread the rod through the curtain and rehang the rod onto the brackets. And there you have it. I feel this curtain really sits well with the aesthetics of this 1870s farmhouse. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed this video and are able to use this tutorial to hide some of the junk in your trunk or armor, that is. If you liked the video, please ensure to subscribe, like, and comment, and make sure to share our videos with others you think will enjoy them too. Okay, bye!